Hi everyone, welcome back to Digital Dreambox. So today we're starting a new series of tutorials in the style of low poly art. Low poly art is in a lot of games and it's just a fun um, looking art style. And um, this will build upon the previous tutorial series we had. So it's still going to be beginner friendly, but if you get lost with some interface or controls, I have that other tutorial series for you guys. Um, but we're going to start off today with some landscapes of so some terrain and then move on to platforms and eventually some props as well. So let's not waste any more time and jump right in. Okay, so let's take a look at how we can make low poly landscapes in Maya. Now the overview for today looks like this. First, we're going to sculpt the mesh. I'll show you the basics of my sculpting tools. Then we're going to retopologize it. Next, we're going to triangulate our mesh. And finally, we're going to reduce it or decimate it. Go up to your poly modeling shelf, add a plane into the scene. And then we want to rescale this. And something to consider, I'm going to scale it by um, 24 in the X, 24 in the Z. But something to consider is that if you plan to have this connect as a larger um, piece, then you'll want a number you remember. Okay. Now open up your modeling toolkit, and we're going to give this some divisions. Click the Add Divisions button. I'm going to click four times, but um, the more topology you have, the more fine details you can create. But I'm going to stop at 51,200 for this demonstration. Next, I want to delete this history because Maya's uh, sculpting algorithm is, is kind of old, so it can start lagging if we have too much history. Open up the channel box. Here's your um, construction history. And then select your mesh, delete history. And I'm also going to freeze the transformations. Okay. Now, go open up your sculpting uh, shelf. Here are your sculpting brushes. And if you have your mesh not selected, when you click on a brush, so I'm going to click on this first one, it's going to ask you to select a mesh. Just click on your mesh, and now you're pretty much ready to sculpt. Double click on your lift brush, and it'll open up the tool window for that. I just close the channel box there, and I'm going to reset our tool window. And this is the size, sorry, the, the, these are the settings for the brush, and the first one is size. And then we have something here called strength. And those are the ones you use the most for when you're sculpting. So initially, you might not see the brush indicator. I'm going to lower the size and then lower the strength as well. And now we can see that brush indica indicator. Um, the hotkey to change the size of the brush is B to change the size and M to change the strength. So if I hold down B plus the left mouse button, I can increase or decrease the size of the brush. And if I hold down B plus the middle mouse button, I can increase the size from the center, which is the zero value. So that's pretty useful for if you want to reset the brush. If I hold down M plus the left mouse button and drag, I can increase or decrease the strength of the brush. And if I hold down M plus the middle mouse button, um, I can increase from the center, which is zero. There you go. And now to start sculpting on this, all we need to do is click down on the mesh and drag, and it's going to lift this surface up. So it's going to lift those uh, vertices up for us. And depending on the strength level, I'm just going to increase the strength a little bit. If I increase the strength, it's going to lift it up even stronger. And then we can start basically building up this form and creating some type of terrain from it. Now, as I build up, a lot of these brushes actually um, have an inverse mode. So this is lifting it up, but I'm just going to um, lower the strength a little bit. If I want to do the reverse of this, what I can do is I can hold down control and drag, and it'll push that back in. So rather than lift, it'll um, do the reverse. And so control is to invert your selection. Not all the brushes have it, but a, a lot of them do. All right, and then what we can do is, as we build up this form and terrain, just going to build it up a little bit more, increase the strength, right? Sometimes we want to maybe smooth it out 
right? Especially if the topology gets a pinch together. So to smooth out your surface, just hold down shift and drag, and it'll soften all that up. And the best way to get to know these brushes is just to um, play around with them, right? I recommend maybe using the grab brush, the flatten brush. The grab brush is very useful as well. I'm um, just gonna increase the size of the brush again. You click down on the surface, pull up or pull away, and it'll start lifting that up. So it lifts down um, a whole section. It's different from the other lift brush where you drag. This one you have to pull away. All right. And then another thing um, we can do is, I'm just gonna go back to the lift brush. You can use a stamp. So right here you have a stamp uh, tab. Open that up and click Use Stamp. And then you can pick from a, a collection of stamps that Maya has. It doesn't have very many, but you can import your own alphas. I'm gonna click Brush Noise. Just close this up. And then how this one works is that um, as you drag on, it uses this to give you a bit of a texture. Right? So you can see that this already looks a little bit like a rocky form. And if we have, if we had more topology on this, topology I should say, um, you would see um, that surface better. Right? So it's just going to build this up a little bit. You can see it's starting to get pinched a little bit here. One thing you want to watch out when you're sculpting is that those vertices don't cross over each other too much because that can break the retopology process. So just going to smooth that out. And then yeah, so I'm just gonna just increase the size of this brush and just build up a lot of it at once. And then another time saver you can do, I'm just gonna um, change it, is the stamp brush. So the stamp brush is um, basically just a stamping tool, but you click use stamp and you can import a height map, right? And by default, it should be scale image from center. So what I did was, I grabbed a height map from the internet. Just gonna show you guys. I Googled free height maps, and the first couple sites allow you to download height map from like satellite imagery. And then you can take that into Maya and you can import it. So what I did was I clicked import, went to my desktop where I put it. Should be already loaded from earlier, right? So now here's the height map. I'm gonna show you how this one works. And it's a real time saver. You click on here drag, let go, and it basically uses this grayscale image to create some elevation for um, your terrain. And then you can go in later and um, still work it, right? Like build up that, oops, let's go back to the lift brush. Go back here and, and rework that terrain some more if you want, right? But I think you get the idea. This is just a quick way to just sculpt and create some terrain. I'm gonna close this tool window. Let's uh, turn this into a low poly landscape now. All right, so the next step is to retopologize it. There is another step you can take beforehand, but you have to be careful because it can break your retopology process. Um, but it's called remeshing. What remeshing does is what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to make a duplicate of this so you guys can see. So if you were working with higher resolution, you could remesh it first. Right, and that could benefit from um, decreasing that retopology's time, but you have to watch out because it can break um, that retopology process. So you'll probably want to make a duplicate. Right, what I'm going to do though is I'm just going to click on this mesh and click retopologize. I'm going to go open the window and I'm going to reset it. And what I want to do is give this a target face count. I'm gonna give it about 20,000. 20,000 should be enough to capture uh, the form of this for our triangulation um, process afterwards. So then click Retopologize. Maya opens up usually with an output window so we can see um, the process. I'm going to fast forward it to the point where this is done because sometimes this can take a few seconds or a few minutes. Okay, it just finished, it took um, 82 seconds, so not too bad. Here we have our mesh, which has been retopologized into quads. And now we're ready to triangulate this. And what the retopology did was it um, even, it, it spread it out and we have don't have all, those, um, all that topology in these areas where we didn't need it. I'm gonna click the mesh and I'm gonna go up to poly modeling shelf. It's just a fast way to delete the history. So there's a button here. 
and click delete a history and then I'm going to go to mesh and triangulate. Our mesh is now triangulated and it should have already a, like a little bit of a low poly look but it's hard to see. I'm going to click the mesh, go to mesh display and hardened edge. And now what we want to do next is just click the mesh, delete the history, go to mesh and reduce. And now we just want to play with the slider here until we get a look that we want for our own project or game. I'm just going to keep dragging this up. If you delete the history first, um, this doesn't lag when you drag or it's less likely to. I'm going to drag it to about 81% and take a look. And I think that looks already pretty great, right? I'm going to give this a material that I had earlier. I'm going to click the mesh, right click. I'm just going to assign it an existing material, this Lambert 2 I had. All right. So now you can see with not too much time, you can create a pretty cool landscape um, in Maya with this process. So it seems technically a little bit complicated, but once you have it down, you'll be able to create like great landscapes. Maybe I'll show you also um, that remeshing as well. So over here, I mentioned the remeshing. So say you were working with very high topology. What you can do is select your mesh, go to mesh, remesh first. And then um, what you want to do is decrease this, or sorry, increase this edge length to have something that um, still captures the form, but doesn't have like a crazy, like two, you know, like 500,000 faces, right? So I'm going to go into here and make this like 0.5 and check it. And if it still has a lot of the form, I can delete the history and then go into that retopology process. So it's just something um, you may want to have it as an option, but it does come with the risk that it breaks that retopology. Um, all right, so that's how you make some low poly landscape in Maya. Super easy and it's pretty fun as well. Um, if you're able to learn something new, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't. And we will see you in the next video. Have a great day, guys.